How's it going, everybody? Brian Alvarez here on Wrestling Observer Live. We are here every day, Monday through Friday, New Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern, Saturday mornings with Jim Valley at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 Eastern. Best wishes to him. He's feeling a little bit under the weather, so best wishes to Jim. Sundays with Andrew Zarian, and it is Thursday on the show, and you know what that means? A lot to talk about here today. Last night, AEW Dynamite. And uh, opening match, main event, Dynamite. And uh, we'll talk about that and uh, everything else on the show as they head towards the Dynasty pay-per-view, their uh, their newest show. So a lot to talk about there. And uh, we've also got a lineup for the Collision show coming up on Saturday. So a lot to get into involving AEW. Also, of course, SmackDown is tomorrow. We've got uh, about a week left until uh, WrestleMania weekend officially kicks off. So we'll give you all of the details on that. If you are planning to buy the Dynasty show, as well as other AEW pay-per-views, we talked yesterday about the shows now being available on Fight. Don't have to buy them on, uh, on Bleacher Report. And they have now added more places where you can buy your AEW pay-per-views. All of which I find to be a massive plus. Because I hate Bleacher Report. One problem after another on that last show. NXT Battleground is being moved. They're actually moving it away from literally the same day as Double or Nothing. The shows were both going to air on May 26th. And uh, it will not be taking place that day. They're not only moving uh, the location, but also the date. We've got the main event for the Stand and Deliver show. Becky Lynch talks about Ronda Rousey and a bunch of other stuff. And uh, plenty more. And Mike Sempervivi joins us after the break. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Hello. He's escaped. You know which way he was headed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shoulders. He's been here.
It's Vinny straightjacket. You're getting close. Back on the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com, is joining us here today. Yeah, we got a lot to talk about, though we might. I believe that we do. We do. I want to start with this because it just brings me such delight. AW released the rank. I'm just kidding. I can talk about the rankings. <laughs> Do you guys realize we didn't say one word? We didn't even say the word rankings on Observer Radio last night. I just want you all to know that. But this does bring me great delight. Are you aware that John Moxley moved up in the rankings by vanishing? Hey. I couldn't believe that Britt wasn't ranked. Oh, oh sorry. <laughs> I'm going to step away. Here's what I really want to talk about. All right. And yet another change for how fans can buy their pay-per-views. AW has added both YouTube and, I better make this clear, ppv.com. Yes. Paperview.com. But you have, uh -huh. to, you, know, you have to write ppv.com as methods in which they can purchase next month's Dynasty. Can you imagine it's 2024 and Dynasty is available on pay-per-view? The move comes a day after Triller, the former fight, Made Dynasty available for purchase for U.S. buyers, a move that will extend through June's Forbidden Door, in addition to Bleach Report. New methods are notable, as Bleach Report was previously the sole option for U.S. streaming buyers to purchase AW pay-per-views. The Warner Brothers Discovery-owned brand is the domestic TV partner for AEW in a deal that expires at some point later this year. The renewal of those rights has been a hot topic, especially in how the pay-per-views will be packaged, or not packaged, as part of it. During March's revolution, fans complained publicly about technical issues on Bleach Report that forced them to miss portions of the first hour. In a first, the pay-per-view was then made available for purchase on Triller for U.S. buyers roughly an hour after the main event started. Triller is an international streaming partner with AEW, with both pay-per-views and the AEW Plus service. Regardless of where it is purchased, cost remains $49.99. So, here is what I believe is going on. Based on what I have heard, and also putting a bunch of pieces together. So, they did not mention that this is, like, permanent. They said it's the next three shows. April, May, and June, available on various other streaming platforms. And, you know, people have asked, why, why did they limit it to the next three? And yesterday, we were talking about this argument that I have with people all the time about HBO Max and pay-per-view. I guess just Max, not HBO Max anymore. And... You know, I keep having people tell me they can do this, Brian. I watch live sports. They do it. I, And I explain over and over again, I don't care what you watch live sports-wise on Max. That's not the issue here. The issue is not we want to air Dynamite on Max simulcasting on TBS. The issue is we want to air a pay-per-view. We want you to be able to go to Max... Order the pay-per-view, pay an extra $49.95, and if you pay, the pay-per-view is unlocked, and if you don't pay, it's not. That is what they do not have the... Now, they have been working on getting that set up. We heard about this months and months and months ago. So what I believe is going on is they believe 
there is a decent chance that this will be available by July. And once that happens, that will be the home of AW pay-per-views. And if you look at what happened with this last pay-per-view, this was the retirement of Sting. And if you look at the number of buys this show did, I think it's, I think it's like 170,000 right now is what it's at. Maybe maybe a little bit more. But dude, that thing did great. And a lot of people tried to get it, and they couldn't. And my presumption is that when Tony Khan was running his biggest pay per view, his I mean, it's the biggest pay per view in a long, long time. It was it was uh, you know. Maybe the biggest when all the final uh, secondary buys come in. I guess we'll you know find out at some point. But when people couldn't buy for that first hour, I mean, clearly there were probably some calls made, and it was like, all right, this thing is let them order on fight, whatever. And clearly Tony and Warner Brothers have made an agreement that we can't have this happen again. So. And Warner's obviously fine with it. They're partners. They're allowing them to do this. And so I believe that this is a stopgap and that the presumption is that starting in July, they'll have all of the infrastructure in place to purchase pay-per-views on Max, and that's when you will start being able to do that. Well, Bleacher Report failed as the exclusive home of online streaming in the United States, period. And it has been available through traditional pay-per-view means. Pay-per-view.com is just in demand. It's owned by the cable companies. It's owned by Comcast and Charter and Cox and all that stuff. So they're going to benefit from this from anybody that, you know, may use their service this way as opposed to ordering it through traditional means. YouTube, I believe, does international pay-per-views in the same way that Triller TV did. So for those folks like me who have YouTube TV and who use YouTube often and have a premium subscription to YouTube, it just makes life easier to me too. So bottom line is, even if it's only going to last for three months, it increases the ways that somebody here in the States can buy the show. And that's not a bad thing. And if Bleacher Report doesn't like that, they can get their stuff together and try something out for Max in the future. But there are too many issues, too many people in too many different areas across this country have had too many issues with Bleacher Report. So it was time to do something about that. This person here says, so would people have to subscribe to Max and, the, and then pay the pay-per-view price on top of that? Or could a non-Max subscriber order the pay-per-view through Max? Well, we don't know yet, but... I can tell you this, you want to buy a UFC pay-per-view, you have to subscribe to uh, ESPN and then buy the pay-per-view on top of that. And people complained and uh didn't matter. We got to do that through they like are Triller TV. on I mean... fire. UFC yeah. is, is not hurting for pay-per-view buys. This did not affect their business in any way. So, uh, you know, one way or the other, I think it's going to be fine for AEW. Obviously, it would be ideal if you didn't have to, but uh, you may have to. And uh, that's that. If you're looking at this from their business point of view, why in the world would you have a flat fee? You know, it would be, I guess it could behoove them if, you know, there's a new deal that they signed with WBD. If they sign a new deal with WBD, gives them a ton of money where it's worth it like WWE thought it was to give a hold you know give up all of your pay-per-views and let them be available with a subscription to Bleacher Report in addition to Max or whatever they're going to do for this thing but uh with how they're selling pay-per-views and the fact that again boxing if there's a big enough show and it very rarely is or, or same with UFC every single month it seems like you know, pay-per-view isn't dead, and if you don't make your fans and train them like WWE has since the start of the network to think this is nine ninety nine, you know, then then they're never going to have to worry about that, and you're always going to be able to charge for pay-per-view. So, you know, hopefully that's uh, for their business purposes. Hopefully that doesn't happen for them. For fans, I hope it does. You know, I was uh, I was kind of thinking about this 
this whole cost of pay-per-view thing. And obviously you've got one extreme, which is you can pay four ninety nine and watch the Peacock WWE shows. And uh you know, it's it's four ninety nine. And and they're they've got so many people that are watching their pay per views right now. And then on the other extreme, you've got UFC where you have to subscribe to ESPN and pay like eighty bucks. And uh, they're also absolutely on fire. So there's a lot I could discuss about this. But we got to go to break. Back in a moment, it's for live. Corey Lee with the Wrestling Observer. Um, I do want to talk about uh, the main event tonight with uh, Sting's final match. I just wanted to kind of just get your thoughts on Sting's retirement. Obviously, you had a feud with him in, in TNA uh, over the TNA World Title. Had a couple great, ma- you know, great matches with him, and just kind of reflect a little bit about your history with Sting and what he means to this business and this company. You know, I've I've I've, I've known Sting as a rival, as a friend. Uh, you know, outside the ring as a confidant, somebody who has uh, been a steady and, and, and sobering voice during a lot of chaotic situations throughout my career. Uh, aside from that, for 40 years, Sting has elicited emotions from crowds around the world that, uh, you know, uh, uh, most wrestlers could only hope they would achieve. And I think that, uh, you know, tonight, how much love he received, how many people showed out for his final appearance, and, uh, you know, how much we here at AEW appreciate his contributions to this company. Um, to be a man like Sting, to have the legacy and the, and the legendary status that you do and still show up here and give that 110% and still try to build a new company and still give of himself physically and mentally at a very high level. Um, you know, it, it, it speaks to his character, it speaks to who he is as a human being, and it speaks to the legacy that he deserves to be celebrated tonight. Two more questions? Uh, Scott Fishman, TV Insider. Um, you know, you being the AEW World Champion, you're seen as the leader, like a face of the company. What are your, what's, how would you kind of describe uh, the vibe right now backstage in the locker room and the working relationship that you all have? Um, it's been a turbulent couple months last year, but it seems like things are a little steady right now. So kind of how would you kind of describe the feeling that you have backstage? I, I think you summed it up perfectly. That was last year. And I mean, this is the AEW underneath my reign. And, uh, I, I, as far as uh, our, our locker room committee and stuff, I don't think it's ever been tighter. I don't think it's ever been better. Uh, there's a enthusiasm backstage that is infectious, and it's because, you know, we have so much new uh, burgeoning talent. We have so many new opportunities to go out there and entertain the crowd with the people that we have uh, at our disposal. That um, you know, there's just there's just genuine excitement among the locker room, and uh, you know, I, I think. Uh, it's been a long time since uh, uh, the, this spirit has been felt here, and uh, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to uh, you know where this leads us in the future. Last question for Joe. All right, cowards, cool. All right, I'm good. <laughs> Samoa Joe, our AEW World Champion, everybody. Thank you so much for your time, Joe. So I think with the pay-per-view is, you know, you've got one company that's, uh, that's giving away their pay-per-views for like four ninety nine, dollars you got another company that's making you pay like 90 bucks a month or whatever if you add in the ESPN cost. And they're both absolutely on fire. And it is all speculative, but I think part of it is, in the case of WWE, I mean, it's so easy to follow along. It's, it's, it's practically free. Especially if you buy Peacock for any other reason. If your wife has some show that she likes on Peacock or whatever, and so you've got it. I mean, you're, you're, you're getting WWE pay-per-views free. So the barrier to entry is virtually non-existent. And they've got more people watching their pay-per-views than ever before. Just tons and tons and tons of people. Record numbers of people watching these PLEs or whatever. And then there's UFC, which is the exact opposite. You know, 70 bucks, 75 whatever it is. 
add the 10 or 14 bucks on top of that for ESPN. I mean, they're they're asking for 100 bucks a month almost. And on fire. Things totally on fire. And I think that the reason for that is that when the cost is very low, like anybody can watch it, basically. When the cost is very high, I think what happens is, remember back in the day when we all got together for pay-per-views? It just happened all the time with me. We'd go over to one person's house, they'd buy the pay-per-view, we'd buy the pizza, whatever, everybody chips in. Well, we don't do that anymore. You know, people come over here and there, but if you want to watch a pay-per-view, you can sit on the treadmill and watch it on your phone. Whereas with UFC, I mean, I think a lot of people, all right, who's getting it this month? One person buys it, other person buys beer, other person buys pizza, wings, whatever. And I think that because of the high cost, it has become more of a, uh, uh, I don't want to, the word cultural is not right, but camaraderie. It's more about camaraderie. You and your buddies watch it every single month and you chip in. So I don't know what that means for, uh, you know, AEW. They're right in the middle. They're literally right in the middle. It's like one's offering it practically for free. The other is asking you to, you know, pay out the wazoo. The wazoo. <laughs> and the other one is smack dab right in the middle. So it's just interesting. Well, and let's not forget that the UFC is a sport, you know, and it's a heavily saturated sport on ESPN that's got a rabid fan base. And I know, yeah, well, pro wrestling does too. Sure it does, about 2 million people who are really rabid for the WWE. It's probably the cap for everything. There's a lot more sports fans. There's a lot more fight fans. And I think that's got a lot to do with it too. Again, two differing philosophies, WWE, I mean, it was great for the fans, but with hindsight being 2020, at the very least, what they could have done was have the WWE Network have eight pay-per-views on the network and maybe some other special events, but really have their big four, their four tent pole shows. They should have remained in hindsight. They should have remained on pay-per-view because people would have been paying a hundred bucks this weekend or coming up next weekend for two days of WWE or however much they would charge for it. And they probably still would in the future. We'll see how things go, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be the case with Netflix spending as much as they did to bring everything in. I'm going to assume at some point WWE Network's going to end up over at Netflix and it won't be available for bidding and it's going to disappear off of Peacock, which, you know, that's going to start to lead to a bunch of other issues as well, too. And I've seen people, and this is a little bit of an aside, but I have seen people give AEW credit for still issuing Blu-rays. I'm not sure if they do DVDs as well, too, what? but they're actually doing physical media, which is a cool thing because... As we've seen with the network, things can come and things can go, but at least if you have a, a digital copy of something, you don't have to worry about a Max in the future possibly removing something that was part of the AEW library. I know that's a long way to look, but you know when it comes to WWE, we have those issues now. Well, I am thinking of releasing the shows on, uh, on uh, vinyl, our shows here. On 78s? I think it would sound great, actually. On 45s, or what are yes, we doing here? Yes, exactly. I'm wearing my 70s shirt right now, this odd yellow color. It's not, it's, that's orange, isn't it? And now it's yellow. Are you colorblind? More of a, more of wrong a cantaloupe. With you? Well, it looks cantaloupe to me. Maybe my screen's bad. Okay. Now, we've also got NXT Battleground. So this show was originally airing May 26th, the same day as AEW Double or Nothing, and it has been moved a week later. Actually, a little uh, two weeks later, Sunday, June 9th, and it is believed that it will be running at the UFC Apex Synergy in Las Vegas. And uh, I was told that if that is the case, they may be uh, also testing it out as a potential location for when they jump to the CW. So uh, that's the uh, that's the news. It's a great idea. Yeah, I mean, usually, you know, there was that time where, well, you know, AW double or nothing, let's put an NXT show head-to-head, -head, and uh, they are not doing that this time. They they are moving it after the announcement that uh, AW was running that day. And let's be honest, I mean, maybe they should, and I'm not saying they should have some other territory or anything like that, but you have the Performance Center in Florida, obviously, 
the UFC doesn't want to move too far out of its way. But yeah, if you're WWE, why not go ahead and utilize that? You own it. If you're looking at this from TKO's point of view, you own it. Utilize it. It'll be interesting to see if, again, anybody, TNA, it seemed to be, what's the, the deal with them in full sale? Because remember those talks that were, were the possibility of, I mean, are we going to see possibly TNA do that at some point? I have no with idea. With AEW, they already have a home building, if you think about it, when it comes to the uh, Daily's Place. So it's one thing TNA doesn't have. They have that studio in Nashville, but every other thing that they do takes place north of the border for obvious reasons in, in Ontario and stuff like that. If they're talking about expanding, which it looked like they did, to me, you know, you kind of need a place where all the wrestlers are, which is in Florida. Shawn Michaels did an interview with Sports Illustrated. Trick Williams, Carmelo Hayes story, he says, <laughs> has been a driving force of NXT oh. over the past several months. <laughs> it deserves to be the main event of what is sure to be a memorable NXT stand and deliver. And it is. They're going on last in a match. Oh, well. The title match built around going to dinner <laughs> will not be closing the show. Oh, I don't yeah. get it. I don't get why there's not a stip, and we still have a couple of days. You know, they could do something coming this Tuesday that says, all right, lights, whatever it is. You ain't getting up at the end of this thing. Yeah, but, but even I, that, it's like we've gone this far, and they've announced, and it's like you're just going to randomly. How do you how do you add the stipulation without deciding? Well, we're just going to randomly add something because it's the main event. You know, we decided it'll be lights out. Yeah. Just figured why. I know, I know. This was Look, so idiot proof, and I'm a big fan of NXT and Shawn Michaels, but this was so idiot proof. Carmelo should have beaten Elia at the last show. And then here we go, the road to the title. Titles aren't everything, Brian. We have had big shows in the history of the world that have closed with just two people that people want to see fight or people want to see wrestle. And the world We had a reverse battle royal that. once. The, Twice, the actually. Don't try to Twice. compare those two things. You were a professional wrestler once. Let's not bring up You know up what? We had, we had Ultimate Warrior do a gimmick where he vanished in a war games. <laughs> Which, when you <laughs> really think about it, it's even more stupid. Okay, I don't care what they've done in the past. <laughs> Do I look like I live in the past in my well, 70s mustard yellow shirt? I don't. I don't care it, what anyone did anywhere. Shirt? This was idiot proof. Who's got the heroin sleeves And they on. messed it up. <laughs> they messed it up. Whatever, I don't care. You know what's funny? Is I actually don't care. No, it, it, no, it you means, don't care at all. It means nothing you to my life. You don't care about this. You don't care about CM Punk. You don't I think care it's about stupid. ratings. I don't care that much. Liar. Ratings? You want me to talk about ratings? <laughs> yes. Yes. Actually, I was really sad. NXT uh, at 601,000, which was up 5%. 0.17, which was uh, down 5%. But man, deep fall off for that main event with Tazawa and Otis versus Braun and Baron. And as uh, you know, Dave noted, it's you treat Tazawa like a geek for years, and then he's in the main event. I mean, just people didn't watch it. It's too bad because I greatly enjoyed that match. I talked about it all day yesterday. Thought it was great, but it uh, didn't do well. But you know what's going to do well? What's that? Bloodsport Bushido. Josh Barnett and Minoru Suzuki announced last month that they will bring the shoot style event to Ryogoku Kokugikan Sumo in Tokyo, June 22nd. <laughs> I like to use the actual name. Uh, and uh, here are the list of people scheduled for this show. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Well, the, the most important names. Quentin Rampage Jackson. I love it. Love it. Kazushi Sakuraba. <laughs> Masakatsu Funaki. How is Sakuraba even available? How can he even... Move? Mike the Titan O'Hearn. Wait, who? Mike the Titan O'Hearn. I don't remember him. He's a bodybuilder and an actor. He was Titan on the American Gladiators revival oh, show okay. in 2008. Wait. And, uh, yeah. Golly. So, now that sounds Filthy's got to be on this show. I know. I know. He's got to. Wasn't Rampage going to box somebody in, like, Saudi Arabia or Qatar or something like that? I, I feel like. That deal. 
I feel like that was going to happen. Yeah. And it was one of those real random ones, too, where it's like he's, you know, I think it was technically another former fighter he was facing, but it was a completely ridiculous match. Back in a moment with some Dynamite Talk Observer Live. Now he's got Brian Alvarez, he whips him into the corner hard. Adam Firestorm following up, catches a boot to the face. Brian, Al uh, Brian Alvarez with another hard shot to the head. One, two, this is the most aggressive I've seen Brian Alvarez today here in Portland Wrestling. Now he's got his knee across the throat, he's choking him, LC. Well, it's like this week Alvarez has something to prove, brother, something to prove to his sweet little lady over there. Of course, Adam Firestorm with a big win over Black Dragon last week. Looking for another one here. There's a sunset flip. Is he going to go down? Yes, he is. Over he goes. One, two, three. It is all over. Adam Firestorm with the victory over beautiful Brian Alvarez here in Portland Wrestling. Now out Brian Alvarez firing away with a boot. Action continues after the bell. Goes for the back body drop. No! Face first plant by Adam Firestorm. Your winner once, looks like he'll be your winner twice. Action continues. There's a whip into the far corner. Adam Firestorm follows with a spinning kick. LC, I think Brian Alvarez has bit off more than he could chew tonight. Miss Rentone really disgusted over in the corner. Adam Firestorm not done. There's a lion sold on top. He hooks again, one, two. Two and a half. I thought we had a three count earlier in this match, LC. I was wrong, I'm sorry. I can't sorry. believe it. I thought Youth Gone Wild was just adding a little salt to the wound. I thought Alvarez was out of her head and a two-time loser, brother. Well, Mark Watson's hand must have stopped just short of the three count. And these eyes of mine need glasses because I thought I saw a three count Brian Alvarez going up top. Oh, uh, we'll forget about your cataracts, brother. Up and over he goes. Nobody but home. Adam Firestorm back in control, playing a bit of possum. He's climbing up top as Rento and Otto really upset. There he goes. Swap, oh, is that one yet? There's a hook to leg. One, two, three. Now it's all over. A two-time loser. And does the LC have to look after Miss Rento and Otto tonight, baby? There's Adam Firestorm, your winner in this match. Once, twice, three times, it didn't matter. Brian Alvarez not up to a Miss Rento and Otto. Absolutely disgusted with it. Mark Watson explaining to him it was a three count this time. No hook to leg. Fair and square, Adam Firestone. Your winner here on Portland Wrestling. Fans will be right back with a, after a message from our sponsors. Back the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Simper, BB, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So last night was Dynamite. I mean, if you want the full review of the show, it will be Lance and I on the Brian and Vinny show tonight because Vinny is unavailable. So Lance and I are going to run down the full recap. Wait a second, Brian, but what if I want to read a recap of it? Well, what you can, can go to WrestlingObserver.com right now where my... Report. Subscribers only full report of this show is up. Much like all of the reports I do. Raw, SmackDown, Collision, PLEs, pay-per-views, the whole nine yards. So uh, you can check that out right now at WrestlingObserver.com. And I should note that the very first thing that I wrote was the show drew 4,000. But that apparently was wrong. Uh, apparently, WrestleTix, there was an area that was curtained off or something. The actual number was... Uh, 3,200. So uh, it's still better than when they were doing like 2,000. But I think actually most dynamites have been 
you know, 25, 3,000 around there. So it was, it was about what it's been doing. And the issue was the building was absolutely gigantic because, you know, people were sending me photos of how empty it was. And I was like, they, they, they didn't do a terrible crowd. But when you have a building the size of this building and there's 3,200 people, it looks like it's completely empty. What was it like 18,000 for concerts or something like Which that? Which actually was uh, one of the tricks that Paul Heyman used to do. I mean, he wasn't going to sell, you know, 5,000 tickets. So you run a 1,800-seat building and uh, you have people hanging from the rafters. It looks yeah. like the hottest game in town. You take those same 1,800 people, put them in a 10,000-seat building, it's like this place is cold. So... Smaller yeah, was, buildings. Yeah, it was a thing with ROH at the uh, Duke Burns Arena when they were there, you know. And then again, you couldn't do TV all the time in a in a bigger building like at UMBC or at a Balt- certainly not at a Baltimore Arena. And that's that's what it feels like AEW does every time out. So the uh, two hot matches on the show for those of you that love bangers: uh, Will Ospreay versus Shibata in the opener. And uh, and the main event as well, which was a number one contenders match. They they flat out said it this week: Takeshita versus Swerve. And uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about rankings. I just want to bring up they suck that you know they they announced the rankings at the end of January, right? Yeah. And then they randomly announced a second set of rankings in like the middle of February, mm-hmm. and then they just totally dropped them. To the point where we said they're gone. They're not doing them anymore. So it was like six weeks. And then they randomly announced we're going to have new rankings out at the end of the show on Wednesday. And my point in all of this is, you guys realize that during that six-month period where they didn't mention the rankings and they didn't have rankings, I mean, I seem to remember things were going along just fine, right? I didn't have a problem with anything. No. So then on this show, the reason I bring up the rankings is, uh, you know, this show had a number one contenders match with Sky, Chris Statlander, Willow, and Anna Jay, with the winner getting a championship match at the pay-per-view. And then they had a uh, number one contenders match in the main event with Takeshita and Swerve. And I thought, great, <laughs> fine. You, you got contenders? They're having a number one contenders match? Like... What the hell do we need rankings for? Well, now we have rankings. So I was fine without them, but they're back. So is are they calling them monthly? Are they doing it like Pro Wrestling Illustrated now, where only once a month they're going to talk about ratings? I and, think and they have new and... rankings. I think the idea is they have new rankings at the end of every month, but they didn't do that. They had them at the end of January, then the middle of February, and then the end of March. But I think they're supposed to come out at the end of every month. Now, everybody listening to this is going to have their own theory, their own head cannon, as they call it. Uh-huh. But we actually don't have an answer to these questions. You can make up answers if you want, but we don't have answers. You know what's not canon and what has been proven time and time again, anytime rankings or ratings, however you want to call it, have been used in pro wrestling on TV shows from some of the best minds in the business who have tried it. They have never worked. They don't work. People don't care. Period. Now, the uh, the number one contenders matches ended up being Sky Blue, Chris Statlander, Willow Nightingale, Anna J. Mercedes was on commentary. Oh, my God. Well, Can you I'm find a way to make that. someone less of a star in one night That's than to put well. Mercedes on commentary? I mean, she sat there, and for the first half of commentary, she just said, Oh! Wow! Huh! And then they tried to ask her a question to get some, like, something out of her, and then she really didn't have any answers. And they did have a stare down with her and Willow, and then Willow ended up pinning Anna with the doctor bomb. And so, you know, Dave was baffled. I have no idea why. It is so absolutely clear where this is going. And that is, we're going to have to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait for Mercedes to actually have a match, because that's what they do. And first, Willow Nightingale is going to win the TBS title at Dynasty. And then we're going to build to Mercedes and Willow Nightingale for the title. And obviously, Mercedes was supposed to beat Willow when they had their match for the New Japan women's title, IWGP women's title. But Mercedes got hurt, and she put over Willow. So Willow got the title. 
So now they're going to do Mercedes beats Willow, gets her win back, and gets the title from Willow that she was supposed to get in that first match. Now, why, Brian, did you bring up the rankings again? Why? Well, I brought it up because now that we have rankings again, for those of you that are wondering what they're going to do with Mercedes, I think it's clear Mercedes has to beat a bunch of nobodies on television to become ranked number one by double or nothing. That's not what I would do, but that's what they're going to do, I think. So, uh, yes, I believe Willow and Mercedes for the title will take place. I mean, I guess they could hold it off until Wembley. I mean, no. they could. Like they but could. I would presume Jesus. this would be a short-term title change with Willow winning at Dynasty and losing at Double or Nothing. I uh, just, she's got, she's like Sting. You know, people go and they see her, and other people can't understand why people like Sasha Banks, Mercedes Monet so much, but she's got a huge fan base. One of the things she's not great at are her interviews, and people that do like her do like some of her interviews, but for the most part, you don't stick her on commentary, you don't stick her on play-by-play or color, because... Again, she's already a known entity that way. It was a, it was like a WWE segment in that they put somebody on commentary almost just to do it, to watch the match, to get the facial reactions. And I'm okay with that, but it was, I don't know. It's just learn from this. And also having her out there for a long time too, I don't, much like a sting, isn't the best way to go. So her hooking up with Willow sooner rather than later, I like a lot because Again, she provides some things that Mercedes doesn't. Now, here's another very interesting thing about AEW. And that is the top women's title feud, if you presume that Mercedes being involved makes this a top women's title. Some of you would say that actually the top women's title is Tony, Whatever. But one of the top, because there are multiple women's belts, one of the top women's feud... And the top men's feud, both of these. Did you hear, by the way, the Sami Zayn inter- uh, the Sami Zayn interview the other day, where he was talking about that match that he had with uh, with Gunther? Yes, or with Chad Gable. With Chad Gable, the, yeah, uh, the, yeah, the deal. So he, uh, you know, he said he apparently he was on a plane with Booker T, and they were discussing this, and then Booker went and talked about it publicly in his podcast, and then Sami had to explain himself. And, you know, Sammy basically said, you know, uh, these are not his exact words because I'm, but he, he was kind of, he was, he was a little let down by the crowd reaction. And he noted that, you know, it's a big win. I'm going to WrestleMania. I'm very excited about that and everything. But it was a split crowd because a lot of the fans thought that Chad deserved this. Yeah. Okay. Now, now why do I bring split. that up? Why do I bring that up? Because... I will uh, I will put on my flak jacket. I'm sure I'm going to get it. But if you watched the show last night, Willow Nightingale got a way bigger pop than Mercedes did. Willow is beloved by these fans. Mercedes is supposed to be one of the top women baby faces, and they are going to be doing a feud. And you've got two baby faces. And I know that AEW has done this many times, but, you know, you always run a risk when you do that, that one of the two, it's going to be a Sami Zayn situation. This is supposed to be the big crowning of Mercedes Monet beating Willow for the title, but I don't know. She's going against the most beloved babyface in the company and someone who the fans see as homegrown. So also, what's the uh, what was the main event? Number one contenders match. To catch and swerve. This freaking match was awesome, by the way. If you've not seen this match, amazing. So, swerve won, obviously. It is swerve and Samoa Joe at, uh, at the Dynasty show. I don't know for sure, but I, I presume that swerve is winning the title from Samoa Joe. It's time. So, swerve is going to be this uh, big-time babyface as champion... And I think we all know that Will Ospreay's crowning as champion is very likely to be happening at Wembley. Which means at Wembley, it's going to be Swerve's house 
against Will Ospreay, which again, you know, you're probably going to get swerved booed like crazy out of the building in Wembley, but... I mean, it's just well, interesting he may, that he may, he may not have that belt by then, though, because you can belt him up, have him in a few, then have him lose it. But uh, that's just that's not what they do. I mean, you could do that, but it's just not what they do. Yeah, well, they a lot of what they do is not right. <laughs> and, you know, you don't have to do Mercedes and Willow. Maybe in Mercedes mind you have to, but you don't. I think you need Chris Statlander to turn on both of them first, because, again, I think, again, like I said before, the alliance of Sasha and Willow or Mercedes and Willow together is a lot better for Mercedes. It, it really will be. And Willow could obviously use to, you know, to be around Mercedes and some of that star power or however you want the trade off to be. But to have them have to have a match, even if it's two baby faces that are going to be cheered, I mean, it just does not have to happen anytime soon. Nobody is pining for the match of, oh my God, we didn't get the full match. We should have saw it in New Japan Strong. No AEW fan, no wrestling fan cares about that. So then we had uh, more matches in the tournament. We had uh, the best friends beating the Kingdom, which was a very good match. Finish was great. And Does that mean they're now number one contenders to the ROH tag titles? Well, Young Bucks beat Private Party, and so it's Young Bucks versus the best friends in a tournament match to get a shot uh, to get the AW tag titles because they've been stripped. And, uh, man, Young Bucks, ROH ones. Young Bucks and Private Party, I mean, that was a really fun match. But uh, Nick Jackson was like, he's absolutely unbelievable. He does the craziest stuff, and he damn near killed himself on a BTE trigger. Of all moves, he grabs them, they go for the kick, and literally I watched it a dozen times because I was petrified. I thought, he, I thought he broke his leg or tore out his knee or something. He literally just slipped like there was ice in the ring. He didn't trip on anything. He didn't do anything wrong. He just brought his foot back, whoop, zipped out from underneath him. He almost killed himself. On a BTE trigger. But it was a very good match. They won. And yes, uh, it'll be Young Bucks against Best Friends in the tournament next week. Back in a moment, Observer Live. It's Tony Storm, joined by Mariah May and Luther. The panic is over. I'm here. Hello, beautiful. It's great to see you. Mr. Khan. Great to see you, I'm getting all tangled. I can't do this. Luther. Luther, right? I'm stuck. This is great. It's perfect. Nothing. Fantastic. Totally. I know. It is so nice to see you. It's great to see you, know. champ. So proud of you. Thank you. I'm can't so proud remember. of you. I can't remember the reason why, but I am. Thank you. Yes. Congratulations. You know what? We should start these a little later and go on even longer. Oh. And that way we can all have breakfast. <laughs> That's what great. Sounds great. I have an 8 a.m. in Palm Beach, so I'm gonna. It's gonna be a long one, but we're good. Tony Storm, congratulations on retaining your title tonight. How, how are you feeling after this match with Deanna Brazo? Shit, Renee, if you must know. But let's get to the important business. So, since all your questions often amount often amount to a fair amount of yellow communist journalism, I've prepared a statement of my own. That way, you won't have to announce which website you work for is like a point of pride, so... <coughs> Excuse me. Good evening. I am still your AEW Women's World Champion. But I couldn't have done it without the following people. Thank you to the city of Greensboro for keeping the riffraff out of the hotel lobby. Best wishes and happy retirement to Sting. Seems like just yesterday we started on this journey together. Feel free to use my summer house in Martha's Vineyard. <clears throat> I would like to thank my protege, Mariah May, for capturing the unpolished beauty of my youth. I see something in you. I don't know what it is, but I do. I am giving you full access to my old storage unit. Help yourself. Ah, uh, of course, uh, to my trusted servant, servant Luther. Yes, um, I'll have a salmon nori roll, carbonated water, and Pepto-Bismol. Right chop, chop. Thank you, dear. <sighs> Thank you to official Aubrey Edwards for making the right decision. 
Next time, please wear milder perfume, if you could. I have a bit of a headache. I would like to thank the commentators, Mr. Tasmaniac and Sean Excalibur Mooney, for their usual <laughs> East Coast, West Coast analytical banter. Ah, and the utmost respect for my opponent and former friend Diana Perrazzo. A great showing. A great showing. You took me to the limit. You brought out the best in me. And blah, 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 I hope you go back to impact. <laughs> I tell you what, my arms are killing me. I don't know how I'm going to do my usual debauchery tonight. I am going to have to open that gift bag that Karen Jarrett got for me. If you understand what I mean. Back in the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. You know, hey, one other thing. It's a shirt you have on. Hey, you see the bows right there? Look at you. Throw them bows. What? Never mind. Anyway, uh, one thing I really liked about uh, the show last night was uh, video packages. They, yes. have, they have greatly increased the number of video packages, and I think that that's good and also important. Because I know we have a lot of people listening to this who are very, very hardcore fans, and they live and die, and they remember everything, but, you know, you, 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 I mean, it's stupid when we hear it on the internet about, can't hit a million or whatever, but uh, let's just say they hit a million, or 1.5 million, or 2 million. Bro, there's six figures, high six figures, people that don't live and die. And follow and remember everything. And so having a video package there, reminding people of what happened, reminding people of, of things that happened in the past, or even things that they have never seen before if they watch every single episode of AEW. They, they had a Will Ospreay, Shibata, you know, clips of their 2017 match from New Japan. It's one thing for uh, the announcer to say it happened, but they showed us. And I thought they did a very good job with the recaps and the video packages, and I think that they should keep that up. Absolutely. They can be between 10 seconds. They can be two minutes long. As long as they're not superfluous and as long as they're well done, they work. Period. And I've seen, it's both WWE and AEW. I've seen some incredible video packages. I've seen some incredible interviews on social media that we never see on television. And that's a shame. Anyway, we've got to wrap it up. Lance and I back later on tonight. The Brian Vinny Show, uh, 9 Pacific, Midnight Eastern, video.f4wonline.com, wrestlingobserver.com. Check us out there. And uh, that's it, everybody. Thanks, Mike, as always. Callers and listeners, everybody in the studio. We'll talk to you next time. Wrestling Observer Live.